you know, whatever. But my dad used to say, whenever you have to go get your car fixed, always wear a skirt. <laughs> These both were great advice. Like they totally worked, right? <laughs> and, but this is the idea of like putting a spin on what you do and understanding that who your audience is and what they're going to respond to and being able to pull out that little, I mean, these are kind of like weird sexist things we're talking about, but hey, it was the I 70s. like them. It's fine. With <laughs> it's real, right? It's real, yeah. you know? And the yeah. point is for me to get what I want and for you to get what you want. There's no, no shame in that. That's what human existence is about that all day long. Every day. Welcome back to the Beetle Moment Marketing Podcast. My name is Emily Bender. I'm here with my very special guest, Kate Bradley Chernis, the founder and CEO of Lately, which uses AI to instantly transform podcasts, videos, and any online news articles or blogs into dozens of social posts. As a former marketing agency owner, Kate initially created the idea for Lately out of spreadsheets for then client Walmart, got them a 130% ROI year over year for three years. Super <laughs> impressive. Um, prior to founding Lately, Kate served 20 million listeners as music director and on-air host at Sirius XM. She's an award-winning radio producer, engineer, and voice talent, 25 years of national broadcast comms, brand building, sales, marketing expertise, the works. <laughs> Hi, Kate. How are you? Hey, Emily. I'm, I'm good. I'm always, I, I, you know, I wrote that bio, right? And I'm, and I always think, who's that? <laughs> Who is that person? You know, it's just this weird sort of thing that you have where um, you either A, don't even know or recognize your own achievements or B, I feel like, oh my God, I'm that old now, which I am. I'm 46. So I have enough years in my life to have had that experience. Um, and then B, like the line seems to be zigzagged but now when you're here it's straight you know like now I see how it all connects um so anyways I, I like this is my favorite part of a podcast is the oh intro. it's at the beginning when you have imposter syndrome a little <laughs> yeah it, it it is it is actually and it's more it's also and by the way if we just want to get into this just go for it like this is something I found particularly with female entrepreneurs I know um, where we don't typically recognize the good work that we're doing and or skip over it or downplay it or give other people credit for it. And it's very uncomfortable to be, and it, it's not that I have a problem being like, I'm awesome. I mean, I'm awesome. I don't have a problem saying that, but like, I don't see the things that I've done the way someone else might do it. And sometimes it's because you yeah, just don't. And sometimes it's because to me, duh, I just think, well, of course I would have done that. Like, why wouldn't you? But that's actually not the case, right? People are like, I'm sure I know they're impressed with you all the time. And it's stuff that you think is like, you know, you just, you don't even think about it. Second nature, right? It is, but nothing is good enough. I'm not impressed by me at this point. I'm frustrated. <laughs> Honestly, Kate, like I usually, I'm really upbeat and positive and I don't let anybody behind the curtain, but part, part of this is you've inspired me because you're super raw, <laughs> super honest. I love that about you. Um, I actually last night recorded an update for the startup that I'm working on, and I admitted that I've been in tears two or three times a week since March uh. or April, just trying to get this thing off the ground. And it's like, yeah, woe is me. I'm fortunate to even have income, and my business is doing fine. But it's it's hard to just keep going. And it's nice to talk to somebody like you because having someone's fresh perspective and like, you're doing great. Go, Emily. And I'm like, you're Kate. Wow, I'm so impressed <laughs> by you. And it's just positive, good vibes. It is hard. And you know what is amazing? This is pre-COVID is that the kindness of strangers is one of the most beautiful cliche things in the universe, right? And we were talking, I was talking to my friend Brian Fanzo about how one of the things that's hard to translate right now is the hug. And I was like agreeing. And then I've actually been thinking about that more and more. And it's not hard to translate a hug. We're, we're doing it right now. Right. Like I just felt I felt what you said. I got tears in my eyes because I I know that place. I know that place of frustration. It's loneliness. There, there's a difference between frustration, fun and frust frustration. Like, who am I? What am I doing? Like, 
you know, all that stuff that goes through your mind and the self doubt and, and all those things. So, um, anyways, like the ability to share that with others, what you're doing, what you're doing is so important for this reason, because like you can only, I feel like you, you have to go down to, to lift yourself up and you have to share the down with others to lift them up as well. Right. 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 That's true. Um, so it's kind of Oprah, we're getting Oprah. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I always <laughs> have, I have a list of questions that I send my guests before I record the podcast. And as you know, I sent you several. And then I was thinking like, you are such a, just ebullient and wide ranging, intelligent, thoughtful person. So like, I didn't need those. I figured we would just roll with it. And obviously that's happening, but, um, Wait, something... you just aced me on a vocab board. I get what's ebullient. That's okay, awesome. That's it's... pretty sweet. It's, it's like bubbly and expressive, unless I'm not defining it correctly. Maybe I've got it wrong, but you know what's so funny? Speaking of having trouble during COVID or in general in life, um, I tried to find a new therapist in Austin and met with this woman twice. And it was very, it wasn't a good fit. And I was ready to just say, could you maybe refer me to someone else now that you know a little about me, who might be a better fit? And one of her, I, I, I wanted to get the critiques. I was like, look, be honest with me. You won't hurt my feelings what did you think about me? Like, what are my themes that you would think I might need to work on? Cause I know what I think they are, but I'm curious your professional opinion. And one of the things she said to me, believe it or not, she's like, you know, you really over intellectualize things. You're always using all these big <laughs> words. Like, I want to be with a therapist that can understand the words I'm using. Like it's, it was crazy insecure on her part. But this <laughs> wouldn't happen in New York is what I thought to myself. That's hilarious. Well, I have a woman who is pretty cool. If you if you still need somebody, great. And she's very earth. Yeah, she's she's cool. Um, I keep getting like but... everything I need is a resource that I can get from you: a therapist, a developer, a social media <laughs> tool to save me time. Lately, yeah. You know, speaking of of like tools to keep you living and smiling and functioning, like so. One of the things that was has been the worst for me for COVID is. Before this, I was under pretty, pretty awful stress and we can talk about that, but it was, it was pretty terrible. And I have a team of people to keep me upright. Um, I have a chiropractor and my, um, my gym, you know, guy and my physical therapist and uh, I have a bunch of freaky people, acupuncture and all, massage and all kinds of other wonderful people. And there's a lot of them. And I made a, a choice in startup life a few years ago that I had to spend money on these things and value them really highly because I literally, um, you can't do it alone. You can, you cannot physically keep up all the things. And, you know, Ariana Huffington, like made it clear to everybody, like you will maybe die. If you keep this up, you need help. And the worst thing about COVID is all my people like vanished because they, I could, they can't touch me. <laughs> right. Right. <clears throat> that, that physical touch is so important. Um, yeah. I do yeah. have a masseuse and I love her. We, she's been coming for two years and that's the best money I spend, like probably three times a month. And when we first were going through it, we, she was wearing a mask and we were following everything. And, and now um, we're not really wearing masks at this point because like I trust her. We know we've kind of vetted each other, uh, no traveling, staying home, quarantine, all that. But it's like my saving grace. Yeah, you got to have. I, w I met a woman's group recently, and they called that their daily. Well, in, the, in their case, it was daily, but their non-negotiable, right? So, what's your daily non-negotiable? You know, for me, I have to do a series of exercises so I can type without pain. I have to do that every day, and I do go to. I either well normally go to the gym or I go to now my gym, which is behind me. Um, but like, I have to do these things, or I will be mean. I will be mad at my husband. I will be mad at myself, all, all those things. And, and finding, you know, this like, so for me, that's carving out an hour and 15 minutes, which is, that is impossible, like almost impossible. And most of the time I'm literally closing my camera, doing one exercise in the background and be like, and then, and then I open it back on, you know, so nobody knows <laughs> like, like other people, pee, other people are peeing while they're on camera. <laughs> I'm just like doing a yoga move. <laughs> I love that. Um, it's so funny. I'll, I'll tell you this. I'll admit this at one of my corporate jobs um, when mm -hmm. I was in my mid twenties, I had an office, I had a door and I would close the door and I had this huge honking wooden desk, old school. And I would 
I would, I had a standing desk on top of it too, actually the same one I still have now. And so I could crouch down behind my desk and like paint my nails if I wanted to. And awesome. sometimes I would be on a speakerphone call and just be like, <laughs> cause I had a chip nail and that's enough. It's expensive to be a woman. There's a lot more upkeep. Everything about it's harder. So you do what you can. <laughs> you do what you can. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they gotta get, gotta grab those moments of joy, whether it's massage or the nail or software or a brand new microphone or laptop um, or a smile. Right. That's right. That's it right. All... Some, I was um, listening to a bunch of podcasts that you've been on because what I've been working on as a host lately is to not ask people the same questions everyone else asks them. And it's hard to do because it's like, who are you and what do you do? Tell me about your programs, whatever. But you said something about one of the challenges of wearing masks. I think it was like an Instagram story you put up, but you said you can't see your smile. And yeah. I've seen those clear masks. You know, yeah. Like, those look weird. pretty cool, but it's true. And, <laughs> and it, it's hard because we don't have that, that monkey see monkey do like mirror neurons firing, looking at other people smiling. You're just trying to go by their eyes. Yeah, it's much harder. And, and I, I'm trying to communicate that with my eyes. Like, come on, Tyra Banks, right? The smize, right? Mm. <laughs> and so we're all trying and to see if you can find that friendly smile in there. Or um, even I've found that the wave, like I, I wave kind of like goofy, obviously. But that just helps so much when the mask on, just giving people some other body language that they know, like safety, friendly, you know, something that um, can level the playing field, which is what we always want to do in COVID, in sales, in dating, <laughs> you know, make that equal, equal ground so we can then talk about something other than the weather. Right, right. right. Um, you, you just mentioned sales. And that brings me to, I, I guess we should talk a little about business and lately and things like that. But um, yeah, first though, I wanted to talk a little about your background. So you were an XM radio DJ among other things. And, and you tell us, tell us about it's the loft. That was your channel, right? Yep. The loft, the loft, you've got XM the voice, XM you've got the loft. How, how <laughs> did you is. end up doing that? And what was that like? Um, so I was at actually when, when I was just out of college, I worked for a, a art rag and art a weekly art newspaper, you know. And so there was like a media party at a local ski area, and I was at the bar, and there was a DJ, and the music was bad. And I knew that there was this other station, there was a radio station group next to us, WNCS. They were kind of like an art station, and I was like, hey, you guys are good at music, get up and fix this. You know, I was just being kind of mouthy, and one of the people was the um, GM and she said, Hey, you have a nice voice. Do you want to work for us? And I was like, sure. I mean, you know, I made nothing and I was like, I'll, I'll go make more nothing somewhere else. doesn't matter. And, um, I started there overnights. This is when you had overnights on the radio where you crack the mic every night and they let you make mistakes because it's overnight. Who cares? Right. So what a playground. And I just was lucky enough to be in radio where theater of their mind was really prized by this group of people. Um, and they really thought it was a job, their job as programmers, not DJs, as programmers to take you on a journey where it's a two way street where you trust me, where segues between songs are really important, where even the drops like the, we call them liners or street birds that ID the station between the music had to have that same kind of, ethereal character that made you feel smart and included as opposed to like some you know dumbass like being yelled at big monster trucks voice like none of that right they would go to dinner to plan commercials you know like these people were really cool and i didn't know what it was like i didn't know radio i mean this, this is just a job for me and um and then i as i was realizing how lucky i was i realized how also there was no money in radio <laughs> um but there is money in production, and so production is the commercial side, the voiceovers. Um, and I'm not really good at voiceovers, except for my, you know, my radio voice. But like, I am good at the production part, like putting together the sound and making, um, you know, audio commercials and in stuff like that. And so I've learned that you can get paid for that pretty well. And um, that's kind of how I sort of made a living, at least for a little while. And then I just needed to get bigger because it just felt podunk to me. And somebody, I got, somehow I got to XM. Like I clawed my way there. The right person introduced me. It was the right time. And I was at the show. Like it was the show. And 
the show was awesome and awful all at once, you know, because it was like a bunch of crazy people. They, they chair, I wasn't this, but they had cherry picked the top DJs across the country in all kinds of genres, right? So you're at this mastermind meld. I was there a year, starting year three. So they'd been there for a little bit. And just to describe this, Emily, I mean, because it was pretty cool. So they put XM in the old National Printing Press building on New York Avenue in Washington, D.C. Now, when I was there, that was like hell zone. You did not go there. They like just put a metro there. And it was even to drive to work. If I didn't get to work before like 8 a.m. to get inside the gate and park my car, I'd have to call someone to walk me into the building because it was too, you know, dangerous. And so the building was really cool, um, even though it was like in this weird neighborhood. And they designed like the main console to look like the Star Trek uh, um I'm not a Star Trek person, but like like the actual deck, the con, the com, the com. There you go. So it's kind of space age. Um, and they the floors were divided up where the DJs were actually on the top floor and then the suits were in the middle and when whatever. So on the top floor, when you finally got up there, literally the elevators opened and it was a zoo an actual zoo where there was like a hundred different kinds of music blaring all over the place, stuff hanging all over the walls, naked posters, like uh, Tony Bennett was literally walking around, you know, it was just this total mayhem and madhouse. And then, um, and then as they got bigger, like happens with startups, the bigger they got, the, it, they killed it. Right. The cool part started dying and, and and we all left. But um, anyway, so that's how, I kind of got to to um, radio, and I I would never trade it. I mean, I met my husband through radio, and I dated a lot of musicians. It was fun. I you know, it's part of the job hazard. <laughs> <laughs> That's so neat. A lot of a lot of the best things that happen in careers, I think, are accidental or just kismet. Um, but I actually was on the phone with Amazon the other day because my, my prime delivery never showed up. And I was talking to this young woman and ended up finding out that she had just graduated from college with a marketing degree during COVID. <laughs> I'm like, great. Wow. And, and so now she's doing customer support for Amazon. And, and she's like, so, so what do you do? And I thought, I'm in marketing, actually. And she's like, well, what should I do? <laughs> should I stay with Amazon? And I was like, look. Look, Morgan, you're doing a great job. This has been a nice phone call. You're solving my problem. I think you're you're going to be fine. Uh, but it, it's a crazy time. Like, uh, it, it, I was just telling you know before we started recording, I was mentioning to you. I read that James Altucher post that said New York City's never coming back, and it's just such an insane time. Um, like this is on it, this time. It is different. You know, mm. cliche. Like, no, you shouldn't say that, but it is actually this time different. Um, and you had mentioned, despite that, and maybe counterintuitively, that there's so much funding and there's a lot of VC money floating around. I mean, how how does that square? Yeah. I, so a couple things. Number one, I think people are bored. Um, VCs are bored. Like they don't have all these meetings to go to and conferences and pitch events and all that kind of stuff. And so they're at home with their families. And that's weird for anybody, right? If you're suddenly at home with your family, you're just like, wow. Um, so I think there's a hunger to do more. I mean, I'm making this part up. This is just what I think, um, you know, possibly. But like, the, well, the other thing that I know is true is the access, right? So suddenly all the um, accelerators, for example, are now global, like, because you don't, you can't be in person. So why not open up? So the access to capital is much greater. Like, I'm actually so jealous. I'm just like, oh my God, I would have done so well in this arena because like, I know how to talk to the dark. I did that for a decade, right? You know, um, but so that, I think that's a big part of it. And then, you know, the gaming industry and the, and the um, betting industry has been skyrocketing as well, right? Because people like, it's so funny. You think that people would hold on to their money in a time of crisis, but I'm not. I also like, we, we stockpiled all kinds of crazy stuff. I bought like cases of chocolate. What's wrong with me? You know, I decided to like redo my living room. I don't have gobs of money. I have a credit card. That's what I have. But I was like, well, if I'm going to be stuck inside for four years, it's going to be the best dang living room I can make it, you know? Um, so I think there's some kind of that. Um, and I think there's also a, a need to, everybody wants the world to flourish. Nobody wants, everybody wants to say that they did their part. 
in some way to to innovate to be a part of the goodness in all the darkness there's plenty of darkness um you know so what is that looking like for you and i think i mean for me it was paying my housekeeper to not clean my house for a few months maybe more who knows we'll see right um but i think um yeah it just seems like the weird influx of all all these companies are raising are raising and having a different um the how do i say this well, one other thing I want to say, which is this, is if you're surviving now as a company, you're suddenly very attractive because this is the hardest time to survive, right? So it's clear mm-hmm. cut. You don't really okay. have to explain the value of your company if you're making mm-hmm. it in a pandemic. It's already there for the them to understand. in the pudding completely. Yeah. 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 And your, your company, your startup that you created from a spreadsheet, which is now this incredible tool, and I have been using it i've been doing the demo for a couple weeks of lately oh, it's trylately.com right we yes although we just switched to lately ai <laughs> lately.ai but they I all was, work now i was going <laughs> to ask you about that because that dot ai top level domain fits what you are offering much better than a dot com like for so branding that's i love that yeah, and here's how dumb we are. We this didn't even occur to us. My friend Judy is in one of our advisors, and she's like, um, "Hello, <laughs> do you know this is free?" And I was like, "What?" And then all the social spaces lined up as well, which is the key thing, as you know, right? And I was like, "Oh, grab that!" Um, but mm-hmm. it's kind of messed us up a little bit. Like, you know, shoemakers have no shoes, right? So here we are, we're supposed to be branding experts, and people are like, "I'm trying to tag you, and you, it's, it doesn't exist." And I'm like, "Yeah, sorry, <laughs> just changed." Uh, um... <laughs> But I wanted to say about about the tool lately.ai that I mean just just having used it for a couple weeks as I, I manage several brands. I have my own couple of brands. Like I've got Beetle Moment, I've got Emily Bender, and I have clients who I help with their social media. And I haven't used a tool before that makes it so easy to churn out a bunch of really good sounding posts basically in one click. And Thanks. it's really powerful and really cool. And this is not sponsored, it's not an ad. I'm saying this of my own accord. Thank very you. cool. Very cool. And and as I've been doing social media since uh, the early 2000s, and this has been missing. Like, this has been a gap. So you're solving that problem. And maybe that's why you're succeeding during the pandemic and would have even in the normal times. Yeah, I think, too, what else is happening, and you're pointing at it, is there's a mindset change that people are willing to have now. I don't have to shove it down their throats, right? So Because everybody just has been forced into... Um, reinventing themselves or reimagining the world or, or how they're placed in it. And with, for a long time, by the way, marketing was a, a four letter word for investors. Like, oh, uh, it's all been done. Martech is old. And I mean, I heard that a million times. So I'm like, I know, I know, I know. And yet I found the last big blue ocean in, in this like, you know, crowded space. And what it is, is, um, is there's, you know, there's a thousand marketing tools, but they really fall into two buckets there's content management and then analytics and some tools do both but what everybody ignores is the front part which is the content itself so we're giving you the ability we're we're helping you create good content so that what you're measuring and analyzing has value because like who cares how good those tools are if what you write is garbage right how do you teach people to write good question it's hard um, so, and the AI's job is to start you at third base, but then the human has to play in. And this is a hard sell for us because people don't want to do any work at all. They're like, well, I just want to push a button and walk away. And I'm like, well, like when you sit down to do accounting with QuickBooks, you don't just push a button. Like you have to sit down and like do some human stuff here. And it's the same way with marketing because marketing is so emotional and human, um, So one of the things we've been doing is I've been actually teaching a writing class because our customers ask this question. Um, And the, so once a month, I think, yeah, it's once a month, once a month, every Tuesday on a Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern, I'll auto-generate content from lately, right? And then whatever the robot spits out, I'll optimize it, go through each one with my personal tricks. And um, the reason I started doing this was because my own team, I found, was being bad at communicating with each other and it was driving me up a wall like crazy and 
I was like, okay, as, if we're marketing people and we can't even send emails to each other <laughs> or like, why am I the only person, like no sales gun that I hire who I'm paying a lot of money can write a good email. This is ridiculous. You know? So I had a, I made a class for my team and then I turned the class into a class and then our customers started asking the same question. So what we're doing now behind the scenes is we're taking Lately's content that I've written and that the AI has done for us and we're feeding it through the brain where you'll be able to push a button that says, well, make me sound like Lately, but you could also pay, make, push one that says, make me sound like Emily, make me sound like Gary V, make me sound like Oprah, right? So getting that tone of voice in there not totally writing it for you, but just helping with sometimes, which is the hardest part is the, um, the personality. People have a hard time communicating, not only communicating their personality, Emily, but like even understanding that they have one, like people present themselves as F all boring, you know, and they have a really hard time. And even people I love, like, so for example, sorry to keep talking, but like Lauren is my right-hand woman. I love her. I love her so much. And we would have these calls together with a client or an investor. And I would be introducing myself. And, uh, you know, I'm interesting. I've got my whole things. And then Lauren would literally say, well, I'm not as interesting. And, da, da, da. and like, so one day I was like, you know what? You are really interesting to me. Like she like is a- a hilarious. So she has her what's the second degree, her master's in um, psychology analytics, which is pretty cool. And she is a master tie dye, not no joke, like tie dyer, which is cool. cool. Yeah. And like French baker, like, like full on makes I meringues. I have no idea. And I've been on a couple calls with her, but you, you don't know, know her. It's your business personality. It's your business. That's right. Like, you know, we're only in this box is what we talk about. Yeah. I get it. I you mean, you gotta like, pull that out and I've so it's guilty so of that people don't even yeah and we were saying this is starts our conversation from the beginning it's cyclical right you don't even see what you are wonderful at and other people have to tell you shoemaker has no shoes that's the theme of my life right <laughs> wow so so you're doing these these weekly classes i think i saw the email about it and i thought oh that sounds good and i could tell that it had really good sales copy because you said tricks you can apply to sales marketing customer service and occasionally the ones you love smiley face <laughs> <laughs> which is That's almost right. like it's like a Cialdini influence, right? So how do you convince your wife that we can we can afford this house or exactly you know, how do you convince your customers I should I should pay for this software because it's going to save me this much time. You know. Yeah, my mom always said when I was little, she's like if you want that dress, you have to bring your father to the store and and try it on for him. Right? Mm. Which was like some, some great uh, you know, insight. And then my dad used to say, this is so, you know, whatever, but my dad used to say, whenever you have to go get your car fixed, always wear a skirt. <laughs> These both were great advice. Like they totally worked. Right. <laughs> and, but this is the idea of like putting a spin on what you do and understanding that who your audience is and what they're going to respond to and being able to pull out that little, I mean, these are kind of like weird sexist things we're talking about, but Hey, it was, the I 70s. like them. It's fine. with <laughs> It's real, right? It's real, yeah. you know? And the yeah. point is for me to get what I want and for you to get what you want. There's no no shame in that. that. That's what human existence is about that all day long, every day. Some kind of getting what you want, doing something to get that, right? And so what's the fastest way to do that where everyone wins? Yeah. And I mean, nowadays, if you look at Facebook, obviously Facebook owns Instagram, and these are two of the main platforms that your customers are posting on that everybody's spending more time on than they do anything besides working, eating, sleeping, bathing. It's social media use on screens. You know, you have the open nature of Facebook and that's coupled with the younger generation, our generation even at this point, the belief that to be is to share. Mm. And then that results in a data set and these targeting tools that make things like a focus group or a panel or a survey like sending a smoke signal there's that's unintelligent so we mm. have all this information and data and i feel like your your tool lately is almost that it's bridging that gap of making the content generation smarter too not just the analytics and the the you know monitoring what people click on and buy yeah i mean that's the goal is to learn what people care about right because if you don't know what they care about um it's pointless and my, my, as, as I learned over the years that what 
typical marketing tools look at are numbers and people can't read the numbers or translate them. And so this is a constant problem. And there's this, un, there's this um, perception of the marketing team that it's just magic. <laughs> some weird magic, magical thing happens with crayons and numbers over in some other room, you know, and that seemed annoying to me because a lot of people who are not marketers who can't understand even Google analytics, which is a little, Kind of, kind of a big labyrinth of information, right? Um, need to understand what's happening marketing. Um, and, and marketing is the most powerful aspect throughout all business because it bleeds into HR, accounting, IT, sales, customer service, right? If, you, if your whole team isn't on message internally and externally, then your company is going to flop, period, right? Um, and so giving people access to that information and understanding what works on a, what a cellular level in this case, word by word, words, <laughs> words, right? Um, that is so elementary, Emily, but, and, but so, it's so obvious people miss it, right? And so we were talking earlier about the zigging and the zagging in, in my bio. Like the reason this connects is because I was a fiction writing major in college. Um, so I understand how words work. I loved breaking rules then. The, run, the best thing about fiction is you can write how you want to, not, not how you write an essay. I can start a sentence with and any old time I feel like it, right? Or so, or whatever. Um, but it's about being the, the author that's commanding that pen so that you, the reader, aren't questioning my ability to use or misuse grammar because you're, you don't even, it doesn't even occur to you, right? And so talking to listeners through sound all the, all my life was a really similar idea again it's this the theater of the mind there's it's different than watching on a screen if it has to go through a book or a headphone to you i i have to rely on you to do some of that translation right so it makes my job harder but also more fun there's an imagination piece in there right and that's where the human and the ai come in in my mind as well like there's that that's the magic the theater of the mind is the magic. It's that unexplainable wrinkle in time, right? That you I don't want to keep that harness. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to harness it. I mean, yeah. we do so much where there is less imagination and theater of the mind. We, if you look at the rampant success of apps like TikTok, it's quite the, it's different from reading and imagining. There's no theater of the mind. It's just right in front of your face. So, right. I, what do you think about the Oxford comma? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? I love it. I need it. <laughs> I just, you said you're a fiction major. I want. This is my favorite question for people who are into writing. It's like one of these age old debates. It's another way to waste time on Twitter. Whatever. Yeah. But you know what um, I've noticed about Twitter? Uh, sorry. Answer the question. No go. No 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 go. Keep going. Um, when you ask silly stuff like that, you do better and get more followers and engagement than when you put out an opinion that's like more upsetting or more um, yeah. contentious, even if it's more intelligent. So it's interesting. Like someone was testing. I, I think it was LinkedIn where like negative um, content gets boosted by their algorithms more than positive content. And I have noticed that as well when I do like video stuff, but then what else is interesting is they always boost um, anytime we're in a top 10 list Anytime I'm like, oh, we made the list, that stuff just goes like gangbusters. And it can be any old list. It can be like the list of like, you know, the strawberry stand down the road. Like no, no one doesn't have to say Forbes on it, you know? So yeah, yeah. I don't know, I don't know why that is, but. Um, <laughs> LinkedIn is a place where it's basically everyone is just, it's kind of a brag place. Like your professional accomplishments. I try not to do that too much, but I think we all do it because that's where you do it. Like, well, we so this list. Let, so here's the here's the hack there, right? That lately does, by the way, which is you're right. And so LinkedIn is ripe for being um, jazzed up because it can be so stuffy and boring. And so people like you or me who zag, we get you know more eyeballs there, right? And so if you have, so if you were to, um, if you were to promote this pro podcast, and you said, you know. Listen to a podcast with my guest, Kate Bradley Turnus, blah, 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 blah. Nobody cares about me. I'm not a name. I'm not Oprah or Gary Vee. So it's not going to drive 
listenership for you. But if you pulled out a quote of the things that we've said here to give people like that inside peek, like a trailer or what's coming behind, that that's when they will be clicking and sharing, right? Um, and especially if you can put your little magical thing on it. So like for me, my my magical tweak is to, so so in real life, as you know, I swear like a sailor, I'm, I'm just like a foul mouth garbage girl, whatever. It's how, <laughs> garbage girl. You know, it is what it is. Yeah. yeah. It's bad. But I, and, and I don't do that on, so once in a while I do, but, but I replicate it with, um, nonsense words or or other words like like yes the other day i said something like holy lemon puckered arnold arnold palmers hard to say but that's what i wrote <laughs> holy lemon puckered arnold palmers <laughs> i don't know why i said that because i was thinking about summer and i wanted to say feel like something summer and someone did something awesome or i'll i'll say um you know um you know hot pickled dilly beans or just some kind of crazy thing in front of my like tune into this listen to this recording with emily um to understand like three things that'll help you translate the human hug through sales i don't know whatever something like that <laughs> right yeah yeah that's the that meat is. and it's the unlinkedin linkedin you know what yeah, I'm I like it. I like it. I might use that as the title of the show because this has no topic. This kind of went all over the board, which is good. It's human. Yeah. It's human, yeah. right? I mean, and that's what, um, you know, now more than ever, um, how do I say this? Like, you know, I have, I'm having a conflict with, with family and the con, the reason it's so upsetting to me is we're not treating each other as humans right and so the sh like hello kettle right here like i'm not treating my husband as a human and my family members aren't treating me like a human maybe vice versa whatever it is and we can't get to that place where people can even understand this um or recognize it but i i recognize it because i talk about it for a living all, all day long you know and so i i do feel it's so interesting to see this um I don't know why I'm getting so deep on you, but my, my, my mom accused me of treating my husband like an employee. And I thought, wow, where I come from, employee isn't a four letter word. Like my employees really like working for me. In fact, they haven't been paid for a couple of years. Like that's how much they like working here for me. I created a really amazing place to work. I did that, you know? And, um, Anyways, it was just so interesting to me to, in that one moment, to hear this perception of what someone else thought. And like, at the same time, of course, I was just trying to create order in my life. <laughs> like, I like it when I, I'm a bossy person. I like it to tell people what to do and I like to have it achieved because then it's off my list, you know, right? That's how someone has to well, guide the ship. If you were a man, you would just be assertive and organized and... Other right. positive adjectives, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, so I, I'm I don't know why I'm bringing that up ex exactly, but like I've been thinking a lot about that today. Like what what I talk about in interviews like this, and then what's happening in my real life, and when it bleeds, and um, you know when is it appropriate to there There's no off button for me ever. There just isn't. Like that's the deal when you're a startup entrepreneur. I don't have an off button, and it has to all bleed together. I think the bleeding, and I don't, that's not the painful <laughs> word I mean to say, <laughs> is what makes it good, frankly. Like, um, and at the moment, because it usually comes this way, my, my human family behind the scenes life usually gets, comes into my work life and there's a positive. Um, and I'm trying to figure out how to make it reverse, you know, right now. And um, it's not working. <laughs> oh. Well, if it's if it's any consolation, um, I think everybody's having a tough time with that back and forth. And yeah, it's it's very refreshing to talk to somebody like you about all of this and to have kind of the the human element woven in. I think that's great, and it is it is a standout. It's a zag. Everyone else is zigging. And yeah. no one's clicking on that. <laughs> and I think, you know what it is, Emily? It's it's this, like, and maybe it's because we're entrepreneurs and it's our nature, but it's because I feel like 
not everybody is comfortable just being naked admitting it. I'm, I can admit when I'm wrong. I don't, I'm not having a problem doing that, right? And I, but I also want credit when I'm right. And that's something this industry has taught me. And when you bring that sometimes into personal life, that's harder for people to, um, you know, understand because the roles have already, you know, been been defined. Or um, I don't know. It's just it's weird. It's a weird thing where I find that when you meet people online, especially, we're already so used to pulling the curtain down, right? And so when you ha- try to do that with people who you've known your whole life, you didn't establish a relationship that way. Um, it's not. It's not the same, you know. They're not willing to pull that. They're not willing to go into that uh, unsafe place, you know. Whereas, like we we live in the unsafe place, right? It's how we make our money, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we have to cut this off. I wish we could keep <laughs> talking. <laughs> um, you and I will definitely talk again offline. But um, let's wrap up with giving people your recommended podcast or book that you've been into lately. <laughs> um, that's so good. It's, it's going to be disappointing. Um, so I, I reread Harry Potter every summer, the whole series. Uh, I do that because I know how it ends. I do it because I love an underdog and I, I love a good evil story. Um, I like magic and I like, words you know her words are cool and i love that there's all kinds of nuggets of of plot really well positioned throughout each each story and every time i read it i see something new um and it's it's cyclical for me so like i can just pick it up and know and know where where i am and it's an escape from the rest of my uncertain life i know who wins you know (laughs) Right. And it's the it's the it's the good guy. It's me. I win. Yeah. <laughs> <In those books. laughs> so um, that it's sounds not very, very therapeutic. Cool. I like it. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's it's not cool at all. But um, it is that, what I that, it is. Well, what I read. Everyone's talking about business books and the one thing and investing books. I mean, that's what I get all the time. So I like it. Harry Potter. It's different. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Thank well, you. Um, Kate, let people know where they can connect with you. Thank you. Now I have to, I was just thinking I have to remember because we just changed it. <laughs> but I, I'm at Lately AI Kately. My team calls me Kately. So that's my, my, my landing spot on Twitter. And um, Lately.ai is, is us everywhere. And, and um, thanks, Emily. It's really nice to talk to you and um, look a human in, in the eyes, frankly. You know, it is. even though you're over there, I feel like you're here. Oh, This has been fabulous. Thank you, Kate. I really enjoyed it. 